yes thank namaste you. thank you saurabh uh, i hope i'm heard clearly yes, yes okay yes, let sir, me you start sharing this you are audible yes okay my slides are seen and they are now in the full screen mode no sir not yet in full screen mode now now they are in full screen mode okay. yes so i'm going to quickly take on let like this right okay thank you so we had some wonderful conversations uh, by jyoti on the pump and the guidelines by spat i'm going to just throw some light on how practically it is possible for our patients to use the technology in care i largely deal with type 1s who are adolescent and adults and i think that's the gap that we have very often that our patients with type 1 uh, who are often seen earlier then are confused later on who continues the care and that that gap needs to be met so what what makes the chronic disease so hard to manage we all realize that there is huge clinical inertia there is problems with lack of self motivation the stigma the permanence of the disease the heterogeneity of the disease and the fact that it's progressive now how do we really solve some of these problems and let me throw some light on that so the challenges are main many the worsening patient to provider ratios the patient burden the healthcare burden the economic burden and so on so living with type 1 diabetes can be made easy and that's largely with the help of technology there are a lot of technologies which also includes data sharing wearable technology social media use and of course the wireless modes of technology so the journey of digital data and diabetes let's understand when we talk about measuring measurement and documentation it's still smbg which holds the key also the fact that we need to transfer smbgs to the log books it could be physical or digital cgms with alarms today largely part of the recommendation also in the spat guidelines extremely important for us to continue education on diet and physical activity carbs and social support we heard uh, previous conversations on carbohydrate counting and how we can bring that about in the lives of our people with diabetes and treatment facilitation by us physicians so let me take you through the various apps you have multiple apps in diabetes management Uh, and i'll be taking you through some of them you have diabetes buddies you have wave sense then you have the smart meter so we we all use glucose meters but they've been tried to be improved on you today also in some parts of the world have the smart meters which are all in one which also have the storage for strips no real battery required and integration with the with the 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 mobile phone which is easy today let's understand our patients do not want to carry too many hardware on them and would like things to be integrated there's also been some attempts to make uh, meter magic meters which are based on the uh, proprietary conductive composite monofilaments which would largely mean that it's on the basis of biosensors and not really the pricking systems well these have yet not been completely uh, validated but there are attempts to try and make meters which may make lives easier you also had attempts at diabetic temporary tattoos that could again replace the pin prick blood test for children with diabetes a lot of these attempts we again the disclaimer is we do not have any of them which are completely approved and have been proven without doubt but attempts continue to be made one of the more popular apps which has been accepted across today is the my sugar app now my sugar's companion app acts as a diabetes log book but what's important about this app which is available both for iOS and and android free that it it gives the user the gamification uh, a gamification process that means the user also uses it as a game and gains points for every aspect of data that they log in and they follow so they tend to gain points so it's 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 also similar for children who are into gaming and want to gain points then you have blues buddy it's a data storage app which uses which users can track their numbers carbohydrates dosage physical activities um and this can be viewed online from any of the platforms where they log in so glucose be is a good data logging app you have diabetes pal 
Well, it is actually users to log other aspects like blood pressure, weight, and sleep. Now, Diabetes Pal was actually amongst the first one. You have products like Ultra Human and other products which are trying to incorporate this. They, they're trying to create a metabolic profile for our patients with diabetes, which talks about not only the, um, the, the collection of glucose data, but it talks about blood pressure, weight, BMI, sleep aspects. So all of these are getting together into the, the form of a metabolic profile. And then you have the fitness calculators, multiple fitness calculators. So our patients with, with type 1 diabetes also who want to keep a track about their calorie consumption, their exercise, uh, all this data can also be stored in the cloud and sometimes can be shared on, on social media. So those who are enthusiastic about it, they want to put up how much they exercise on a regular basis and post it on social media. Apps like these allow them to do that. Then also, finally, you have apps for counting. I heard Cheryl speak about the need for our patients gradually and stepwise to unhydrated counting. Well, it's great, but again, a system where you may not have expertise through educator, trained nutritionists and, and carb counting, you also have the apps which allow patients to understand what a particular meal so taking a photograph or a preset uh, uh, meal item can give them what could be the amount of carbohydrates uh, as per the weight in, in that particular food kind. So there are multiple clinically validated mobile apps and there's a list when you talk about nutrition. You have uh, various apps for controlling the carbs. For physical activity, you have MyFitnessPal, you have Nike and, and running apps. In glucose monitoring, amongst the various ones, you have MySugar, which is more popular. You have the AccuCheck 360s, you have Companions. Then you have insulin type. The one which our patients use here is the MyDose. Uh, the AID systems, I, doctor, you can have uh, uh, people doing it, so which is where you can have those apps, um, which are also available for them. At this point, let me have a disclaimer that for my today's conversation is not contracted, so I'm just giving pure information and not speaking for any one, one particular product. So what's the proposed model for diabetes management? It's actually integration with the hardware. You could have different actuators, your hardware or any system, the use of internet, the information with the help of internet spreading, and then the healthcare provider assimilating this information and helping our, the patients. Diabetes registry is another need. What is a diabetes registry? It's an electronic database containing data from electronic and medical records. It focuses on patients with specific chronic disease like diabetes. It's used by patient care provider, patient and administrator to facilitate the delivery of healthcare. There are many advantages both to the healthcare provider as well as to the patient, to the provider. It is identification and tracking of your patients with diabetes, notification for abnormal test results, tracking the progress and promoting the use of evidence-based care like the current ISPAD guidelines. And from the patient's aspect, it allows them to see all results at one place, compare their health outcomes and helps patients to see results over time on a serial basis to access how they are improving and what is their care that they are maintaining. Social media, again, plays a huge impact. And social media platforms today primarily include patient blogs or pod podcasts, online diabetes forums, general social media platforms. Uh, and as you all know, there are a lot of these which are used in India as well. RSSDI once, uh, does one such diabetes bites, which is largely for patient knowledge, which is done on a weekly basis by the RSSDI social media team. Now, finally... I want to get to, into some specifics on some cases. I want to show essentially two cases here, which should be interesting. Right? So this is an individual who saw us a while back. We're talking about JD with type 1 diabetes, who had diabetes for a year and a half. This patient was on MDI when they came. He came to see us in January last year. Three shots of Aspart and one shot of Lantus. Patient's HbA1c was 7.5, but this patient had a lot of fluctuations and was distressed by those fluctuations. Patient typically was the one who had moved on from his earlier juvenile diabetes care to now into the, the uh, adult phase. And there was a gap that he wasn't seeing any of those physicians or diabetologists, spoke to them about the need to do CGM. And initially, patient went on to do a professional CGM. 
Now, this is this was his reading. So he saw us in January, and you can appreciate this was the first CGM that the patient did between 13 Jan um, to 27 Jan. And here uh, you can see the huge variability that this patient has. The patient's treatment was improved, was counseled on diet, exercise, carb counting again. And we see a follow-up uh, CGM where you can see the variability improving, but still continues to have a lot of intraday variability, including some aspects of hypoglycemia early in the morning and also in the daytime. Now, at this point, it's important for all of us who use CGM to realize that when you look at CGMs and AGPs, how to help our patients, how does technology really help? It is when you talk about AGP derived treatment priorities, the three principles that all of us should carry is the fact that when you see somebody's variability, the first important aspect is to reduce variability. So in this particular individual where you see both intraday and interday variability, your effort should be to bring down the patient's variability through both counseling, diet and, and insulin or medication change. Once you're making the person less variable, you have to try and make it more stable. So variability refers more to the uh, um, interday variability. The stability then refers to more flatter line. That means you're trying to get them more flatter and trying to avoid the intraday variability. Only after you manage to reduce the variability, improve the stability, you should try and reduce the exposure, which is that means that you're trying to get your graph lower and into the time and range. If you try and improve the exposure without considering the aspects of variability and stability, the patient experiences far more hypoglycemia. And that's the principle of looking at AGP and helping your patients. So the same individual later on realized the benefits of CGM, managed to afford it and has been doing the real-time CGM. And this is the data from the real-time CGM, which can be downloaded. Unfortunately, the, the software is not officially available, but, but patients have access to that. And you can see that this patient has had better movement. This was as, as recent as April this year. However, it's not constant. And that's why we talk about the need for more continuous monitoring for our patients, the need to use real-time CGM as far as possible on, on a continuous basis. Unfortunately, in a self-pay country, it becomes difficult for many of our patients. So this one who improved the variability went off track. I remember this individual went for a hike with his friends to up in the uh, Ladakh in the hills was not monitoring, had the issues, came back that time and realized that it was completely all over the place. And then recently, which was uh, between 8th October and 21st November, when we look at the CGM data, has managed to improve some of the variability. An important aspect of, again, using real-time CGM is to encourage more scanning. The device may require only three to four scannings as minimum to get the continuity of the data. But unless patients scan and unless they see the data, they do not change their behavior dosage proactively. So whether they are on the pump or they are on MDI, encourage them to do more scanning. And that's extremely important. Also, Indian setups are patients who cannot afford to use CGM on a continuous basis, will use CGM intermittently along with glucose meters, and that should be encouraged. So for this individual, you can see that when he's not using CGM, he tends to use is connected glucose meters and is, is recording the data on the digital logbook, which will give him different kinds of data, different kinds of logbooks, weekly, monthly, the reds and greens telling what is in range, what is below, falling below the range and what is high in red. Finally, the second case, again, very interesting, 24-year-old uh, who's been on the pump but has, it, has a problem of recurrent pancreatitis. He's had multiple hospitalization is on the pump, but again, continues to have extremely high sugars and fluctuations and hence decided to use the pump along with CGM as far as you can afford. Also a high requiring. So if you actually see this is, these are the suggested boluses to this patient four times and the basal dose is also mentioned, but patient tends to use almost close to 70, 80 units per day and still maintaining high sugars. Now he saw us, in fact, this, this, this data was recorded this um, very recently. His HbA1c last was 9.1 and we look at the data which was downloaded just this morning and we see the fluctuations that he is maintaining and, and largely the hyperglycemia and predominantly staying above range. So he's 74% above target, only 26% in target, has to avoid this. Uh, he's, he's doing capturing most of the data, daily scans are 8, 
the number of daily scans can increase now the other aspect that this individual actually taught us using 640g is the connectivity with the contour blood glucose meter now the cgm connected with it directly getting into the hybrid closed loop system that dr jyoti spoke about is your 780g the previous pump 640 largely had the low glucose suspend but that's only when you use their uh, their cgms a lot of pump users the metronic pump users in india are still comfortable with the abbott fgm sensors which is not synced in so they also when they use glucometers they use the contour glucose meter which is actually synced in with the metronic 640 pump and transfers the data also works as a as a remote bolus so the glucose meter itself has a key that they can actually pump in the bolus discreetly and the information goes to the pump and and the infusion uh, the bolus is infused so carelink software uh, is again a great software for the pump users which allows them to record the data and this data is shared for by the physician which again dr jyoti spoke about as to how they use it in their systems so let me end by saying that there are lot of technology advances it's up to us physicians also to be aware what advantages are there unless you are aware of it you will not be able to guide your patients because then they get lost with as to which device should be used or they acquire it and they do not use it a lot of our patients do use cgms on a regular basis but scan minimally do not know how best to use it are not able to gather more information so we as physicians have to try and give that knowledge to them to be able to take that ahead so thank you so much again for having me and happy to take any questions on the technology thank you